The communion antiphon for this Sunday is rather unusual in its musical structure. Often in a musical composition, the climax or high point of the piece comes near the end. But in this week's antiphon, the highest and most intense musical phrase comes at the very beginning. On the words, Aufer ame, opprobrium et contemptum, the melody is highly dramatic and hangs around the upper range of the voice. But with the second phrase comes a complete shift of momentum and tonality. On the words, quia mandata and following, the melody drops to a lower range and modulates to what sounds like a completely new musical key, centering around the half step from D to E flat. The final phrase brings us lower still, dropping all the way down to a G on tua, before springing back up for the final cadence and ending on D. This change in musical range and emphasis reflects a change in the text. The first line is a plea to God for deliverance and persecution. Remove from me scorn and contempt. But the rest of the antiphon is centered on the psalmist's commitment to the Lord. I have sought after your commandments, Lord, and your testimony is my meditation. Just as the dramatic and energetic melody of the first line is pulled back down by the repetitive and more subdued second and third lines, so the psalmist's cry for help is grounded in his following of the Lord's ways. This has been a recurring theme these last few weeks in the Sunday Communion Antiphons, all of which have been taken from Psalm 119, which is a beautiful and elaborate meditation on God's law. Seen in the broader context of this psalm, these words from today's antiphon convey something deeper than just an attempt to bargain or guilt trip God into helping us. Rather, in the whole psalm, the law of God is linked with his word, his promise of faithfulness to those who follow him. Two weeks ago, we heard the psalmist call on the Lord to remember your word to your servant, which gives hope in desolation. Last week, the psalmist again affirmed his trust in the Lord's word, which gives him the confidence to cry out in the midst of persecution. It is that same trust in the word of God which grounds the psalmist's plea in this week's antiphon. And placing this antiphon in the light of this Sunday's gospel gives us a clearer understanding of just what the Lord promises. Jesus says, there is no one who has given up houses or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the sake of the gospel, who will not receive a hundred times more now in this present age, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and eternal life in the age to come. In these words, Christ acknowledges that there will be persecutions in this life, but he promises that those who give up everything to follow him will receive a hundredfold of what they left behind in this life and eternal life forever. So let us remember this promise in times of persecution. And like the psalmist, may we remain committed and grounded in following the Lord, even in times of trial always trusting in his word, in his faithfulness to his promise of salvation.
Sivi Domine, Nam et Testimonia Tua, Meditatia.